There is therefore now no condemnation. There is therefore now no. Not a little bit. Not some. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Now, when we preach on forgiveness of sins and no condemnation, people tend to think that we are meaning like, you know, these bad, serious things that, that we all know is wrong. You know? Like, we, we, people think that we are referring to those terrible sins that you feel so ashamed of, you don't ever want that closet to open. People, people um, think that we are referring to, 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 to uh, killing and stealing and destroying and all kinds of evil things. Now, it includes that. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. It really includes those terrible, terrible things that we think, oh, you can't even speak about it, you know. Those things are included in what I'm saying this morning. But when I say there is no condemnation, what I mean is even in terms of your everyday walk with Jesus, there is no condemnation, meaning that you know you, know you want to pray more. You know you want to spend time with Him. You know you, you love having fellowship with Him. But because you haven't done it for a while, there's condemnation that robs you from actually entering into fellowship with Him and hearing His voice again. Sometimes it's things like, I'm not coming to church enough. enough. It brings condemnation, and so, and, and so you live in that condemnation of not coming to church enough. Or there's condemnation of not hear. You, there's things that you know that God instructs us and, and helps us with. And, and maybe even things that you hear in church, like going into all the world and preaching, and you haven't been preaching enough. You, you see, so there's so many things yeah. Yeah. that can keep you in a form of condemnation. And here's what I want to say about condemnation. The one thing it does, it, it, it paralyzes Condemnation can never be a motivating factor. Condemnation can never cause you to jump into action in any area of your life. Condemnation will always paralyze you. I'm telling you. Condemnation is like an injection that you get. You want to run, but your legs is not there. And it paralyzes you. <laughs> Imagine you start running and someone injects you with something that paralyzes the legs. You have to go and run a marathon or something. You will not be able to run because you've received something that paralyzes you in your Christian walk and it's called condemnation. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Okay, so I'll just say this. Whatever we can imagine is included in what I'm saying. But I'm really referring also to the small things because those things are many times missed. And we feel like, and we carry, we actually live out of condemnation. So you spend more time with your kids because you feel bad, because you haven't spent enough, enough time with them. And so you actually operate out of condemnation. You, 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 you do stuff, you, you, you function from Monday to Sunday out of condemnation without you even realizing it. And so I just want to bring the message a little bit closer to home. <laughs> because if I preach on no condemnation, forgiveness, everyone says, well, I know that. The, the thing is, <laughs> where is your life concerning that? I, I'm not a good enough father. I'm not a good enough mother. That's condemnation. Condemnation is, I haven't, like for a preacher, I haven't even been visiting any of the people this week. <laughs> or I haven't come to this one. I forgot to phone this one or ask him about how's these things, you know. So condemnation comes in your heart. And you, so, so you start operating out of condemnation. Alright, so we haven't done enough meetings. Or we are doing too many meetings. Condemnation comes into your heart. <laughs> Maybe we expect too much of the people. Condemnation comes into your heart. Yeah. So I'm just trying to bring situations, whatever I can bring, to include someone in this service this morning. I just want to include all of you. And, 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 and you can understand that a lot of what you do 
is operating out of condemnation and therefore a, a, a very little amount of fruit is actually seen and experienced. Because of condemnation, feeling bad, feeling guilty, operating out of guilt, helping out of guilt, doing out of guilt, operating out of the wrong force, the wrong motivation. Only right motivation is love. I want to spend time with my kids because I love them. I want, I, I want to do this. I want to serve in church. I want to help this ministry. I want to give if we get to that part. I want to operate out of this place of love and not out of condemnation. And I just feel this morning it's so so strong in my heart. It's like God is impressing it in my heart that, that the people are living under con condemnation. We are living under con condemnation. I think many times when God speaks to me, it's first to me. But so I'm bringing you the word that he gave me. That we shouldn't operate out of condemnation any longer. We should hear the truth and the gospel to, to, to set us, that completely set us free. You should hear the message on the cross and forgiveness until you actually believe that it's only by the blood of Jesus that you've been washed and cleansed and made perfect. All right, so what takes condemnation out? The gospel. The cross. Now, condemnation has an effect on your conscience. Like your conscience. You know your conscience. It's, it's a guilt, it's, it, it brings a guilty, defiled conscience. Um, let, let's go to those places. Like I said, we'll see where we end up with this service. But let's go to those verses in 1 John 3. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> now, I don't believe in hindrances to receive, hindrances for healing, hindrances for this. The only hindrance is believing there's a hindrance. But maybe there's something that, that hinders us a little. And it's condemnation. Okay, 1 John 3 verse 20. Whenever our hearts in tormenting. Alright, condemnation torments people. I'm telling you, sometimes you can have it, you can have it worse than other times. Condemnation torments people. I'm telling you, it gets to a point where people are really, it drives them crazy. Condemnation has that effect. It torments people. It says whenever our hearts in tormenting, torment, how many of you have experienced condemnations, torment, self-accusation, make us feel guilty and condemn us, for he is above and greater than our consciences or our hearts. And he knows everything. And beloved, if our consciences or our hearts do not accuse us, we have confidence before God and we receive from him whatever we ask. Like we receive from him whatever we ask. All right. Okay, so whenever our hearts... In tormenting self-accusation, make us feel guilty and condemn us. He is above and greater than our hearts. And it says that when our hearts condemn us not, we have confidence before God and we receive from Him whatever we ask. My question to you today is, have you received everything you asked up to this point? I have never preached in a church where everyone has received everything. <laughs> So, there's something called condemnation that robs you from boldness. And when you have boldness, you will receive whatever you ask. And so the conscience, therefore, is defiled because of condemnation. Alright? And so you live with a guilty conscience. And out of a guilty conscience or a condemned conscience, you are living and operating and it's really paralyzing you to, 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 to really do the works of Christ and to do what God called you to do. All right. But now what's the remedy? There's an injection. <laughs> the injection is called the gospel of Jesus. What Christ accomplished for you on the cross. Now here's what people tend to do with a guilty conscience. Your guilty conscience 
keeps you bound. Then what we do is we try and heal our conscience by doing good. <laughs> right? Futile exercise or have, there's no fruit. It's like it's useless. It has no effect. So we cannot heal our guilty conscience by doing good. The only thing that can heal your conscience is by you knowing what Christ did on the cross for you and believing in the blood of Jesus. What gives a person a clear conscience before God is only the blood of Jesus and nothing else. Only what Jesus has done. Therefore, nothing you do out of condemnation is in any way going to clear your conscience. And it's also not going to bear the fruit that you desire. Alright, so it's not going to clear the conscience and it's not going to bear the fruit that you desire. What really gives you the clear conscience is understanding and knowing and believing in the blood of Jesus, what he did for you on that cross when he died. Isaiah 53, he was wounded for our transgressions, yeah. bruised for our guilt and iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with the stripes that wounded him, we are healed and made whole. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Forget not one of his benefits, who forgives all my iniquities, who heals all my diseases. So we stand by the blood of Jesus, free from guilt, free from condemnation of any form. And from this platform and with the knowledge of what I've received and believing in what I've received, I can now relate to God and have fellowship with Him. And from there, I can operate and see fruit. Come on, people. <laughs> but this is the platform. This is the, here's the platform. This is the platform where you live from. Jesus died for you. He forgave me all my sins, cleansed me from all my sin and guilt. I stand holy and righteous before God. From this place, I can now live. Condemnation will paralyze you. You will not be able to lift a finger. You will have no fruit. And you will never be able to clear your conscience. So we cannot heal our consciences by doing five good things to cancel out the one bad. Yeah. Or maybe you're at 50-50. One bad, one good. One bad, one good. <laughs> trying to heal yourself by doing good. Trying to restore your conscience by doing good. Your conscience is defiled and it's not clear and it's not whole. What? can heal that is the hearing of the gospel and the hearing to the place where you actually see yourself through God's eyes. If you are here in this church this morning, the way you see yourself now determines what you experience on earth. All right. The Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I'll just repeat. What you believe about Jesus and about yourself is not going to determine eternity, where you spend eternity. It's going to determine your life on earth. And as a man think in his heart, so easy. Now I want to say to you, you're not really what you think you are. You are what God says you are. But you manifest what you think you are. What you experience is, a, is, may, is many times a result of what we think we are. And therefore we need to get such a mind renewal that we start to see ourselves victorious in God's eyes. Seeing ourselves through the, through the eyes of Jesus. Living in abundance. Living in the fullness. I'm telling you I'm not there yet. I'm speaking out of many times. As a man thinking his heart so easy. I've seen the negative and I've seen the positive. <laughs> I've tasted both sides. <laughs> and it's directly linked to how you think about yourself and how you view yourself. If God comes today and He shows you how He sees you, your whole life will change. 
You are not trying to convince God to love you. He's trying to convince you how much He loves you. And you are not trying to convince Him. Or you do not have to convince Him. He wants to convince you. Church is about God wanting to convince people how much He loves them. You come to church to hear He loves you more than you thought. That, that whatever stands in your mind between him and, him and you was removed, firstly by the blood, secondly because of his love. Or firstly, motivated by love, he acted, died on the cross and removed it by his blood. The blood was the means. Love was the motivation. By the blood, he removed your sin. By his heart full of love, he poured out his blood. That's the gospel. <laughs> I don't care where you've been. I don't care what you thought. And I don't care at all about your situation, your life, before you came into this service. The cross of Jesus Christ will never, ever be erased and removed. It happened, and it happened for you. He died for you. He paid the price for you. It is finished. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. You have been made holy. You have been made righteous. He did die for you. If you believe that, you've, you are saved. And now you became the righteousness of God in Christ. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. Then in Romans 8, it continues to say, who will remove, um, what will separate us from the love of God? And, and so love destroyed the wall of separation. But the hammer was the blood. <laughs> when the blood flowed, sin was dealt with. The hand, the love moved Jesus to pick up the hammer. <laughs> love moved him to pick up the hammer and break down the wall of separation. Between you and Him, forever, for eternity. Thank you, Jesus. Shout, Jesus. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He did it for us. Paid the price for us. And so, I think a lot of the fact that as a church we became so passive is because of condemnation. A lot of the... The, 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 I believe the reason things are not actually happening like, listen, we are supposed to be so on fire, bring people into the kingdom, baptize them. During the week, you have to come back and say, I baptized these three people. These three were filled with the Holy Spirit. This one was healed. I mean, you're supposed to be on fire for Jesus. You're supposed to change the world, but condemnation paralyzed you to the extent that there's nothing happening and that's not a good thing <laughs> all right is anyone here are you taking the truth i said because the motivation can never be condemnation has to be the love of god has to be the love of god therefore you have to hear and believe what christ has done for you and you have to heal your conscience you listen you have to heal your conscience how? By sitting under the word and hearing the message of Jesus. Getting a clear picture. Hearing what Christ has done. Believing in what he has done. Experiencing what he has done. It's, it's a choice. We, we, like we, let me say you, we have to heal our own conscience. By going to the gospel. Hearing the message. Just hearing it to the extent that it influences us to the place where we believe. The question today is not, are you forgiven or not? The question is, do you believe? As a church, we've been paralyzed by condemnation. By, by Christians living with a guilty conscience. Paralyzing us to reach out, to help, to restore others, to go for it. You've been paralyzed. I want to inject you. With that reverse, that's going to take the perilous, like, raise your legs again. To run. 
Thank you, Jesus. That or remain paralyzed. <laughs> the choice is yours. As a preacher of the gospel, I can bring you to the water, but I cannot force you to drink. I can preach this message, and, and I will, but at the end of the day, you need to hear it, and hear it to the extent that you believe it. It's like this. It's a person that's sick, goes to the doctor, doctor prescribes the medicine in the natural. If you drink the medicine, you're going to be well. And now the person goes and he buys the medicine. He looks at the, at the, at the prescription. He looks at it. I'm not convinced it's going to heal me. I don't know if this is working. So you're doubting what's in you before you. And so obviously you're not going to receive the results of the medicine. Is there anyone... Like you're not going to receive the, see the results of the medicine. The medicine is in your cupboard and it's standing there and it's for you now to use the medicine. It's the same with the gospel. If we believe, if we know the gospel can help, we'll take the medication. I'm not saying believe to the extent, believe enough to just take the medication. Don't, don't be strong and perfect. Coming for the medication. The fact that you are sick causes you to qualify for the medication. You need help. Needing, needing help is the qualification for the person to go and get the medicine. You don't have to be strong and have everything together before you go and get your medicine. I'm taking, I'm bringing you the medicine, the solution. The solution is before you this morning. We have to take our medication. It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. It clears the conscience of the most guilty person, feeling condemned, self-condemned person on earth. The blood of Jesus will clear that conscience and you'll be able to stand up as a man and a woman of God. You'll be able to change the world. No one will stop you. Because of a guilty conscience, I haven't prayed enough. Like, I hope today you can know what I'm talking about. Because we think those big things. And it includes that. But I'm talking even more about the small things. <laughs> because those are the ones that paralyzes you without you realizing. Sometimes you, you, you're so paralyzed in your legs and then you can't understand why and you trace back and you realize, hey, I've been living with the motivation of condemnation. Which is not a motivation at all. Will never bring any forth any fruit. Come on. Is this a good foundation of where we're going today? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right. Oh, Jesus. Okay. So now the Bible says that if we, if our hearts condemn us not, we have confidence before God and we receive from Him whatever we ask. In the Old Testament, there's a scripture that says, God's hand is not short, shortened to help. His ear is not dull of hearing. But your iniquities have come up before Him or have, have stood between you and God. That's the Old Covenant. Your sins. So the reason for unanswered prayers in the Old Covenant was one, sin. Your sins stop the answer. Your sins blocked the answer. God's hand is not short, and it's still true. His hand is not short that He should not help. His ear is not dull of hearing. But your iniquities, according to the Old Covenant, stood between you and God. But I said to you, Jesus came with the hammer. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> so now, knowing that you are forgiven and righteous, has the exact opposite effect. God's ear hearing, God's hand helping. <laughs> right? So, Basically, the Bible says, if we ask anything and not have any condemnation in our hearts, but confidence before God, we'll receive what we ask. 
That's what the Bible teaches us. I know we're not all there yet. I know. But like I said, there's so many teachings on hindrances for healing, hindrances for this, hindrances. I still believe the only hindrance is believing there's a hindrance. But here is one hindrance <laughs> that robs you from boldness before God and it's condemnation. Maybe, maybe just make on the list of hindrances, just put their self-condemnation. If you want to have a hindrance, put self-condemnation as your hindrance. But it's not a hindrance because the cross happened. I said it's not a hindrance because the cross happened. I said it's not a hindrance because the cross happened. Jesus died. He paid the price. It's not a hindrance. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. By believing in what Christ has done, we receive out of the hand of God everything we ask. 